Welcome to Kegor Lasso. Ralph Ranić is set to take the reins at Manchester United until the end of the season after agreeing terms with the club. Luis Miguel Echigaray is away, but let's not pretend that this isn't an upgrade. I'm Jonathan Johnson and I'm going to be filling in today alongside Fabrizio Romano to break down the ins and outs of this surprise deal and what it now means for the Red Devils' search for a permanent coach between now and the end of the campaign. Kegor Lasso begins right now. Oh, welcome back to K Golasso. I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, thank you for jumping on. What a surprise deal. So r- run us through it. Who is Ralph Ranić to start with? Yes, yeah, a super surprising one. First of all, thank you again. Always super pleasure to be here together. And yes, it's a super surprising one because we weren't expecting Man United to go for this kind of solution. So what I think as first point and key point is that it will be an interim manager, so Ralph Ragnick will sign a contract as an interim manager, but it's not going to be simply an interim manager. It's much more than this. Um, I always say, uh, since I know how, how is Ralph Ragnick and everybody knows how is Ralph Ragnick in football, he is not a kind of interim coach. He's not working for three or four months for a club. He's a man of vision. He's one of the biggest vision managers or directors in football in the last 20 or 30 years. So we're talking about a person that changed the life of top current managers like Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel, uh, Julian Nagelsmann and many, many others. So the impact he had for these managers, for many players that now are playing for top clubs around Europe, they were in the scouting Brothers of, of Ralph Ragnick. So he can do many different things for a club. And this is why for Man United, this is the surprising appointment. Surprising because they had meetings with many managers. They were thinking of Mauricio Pochettino as a priority, but it was almost impossible to convince Paris Saint Germain, as you know, better than me to change their plans during the season. And this is why they were looking for an interim solution. But as I said, uh, instead of going like for Valverde or Rudy Garcia or this kind of names, the name of Ragnik means he's going to be also something for the future, someone for the future for helping the Manchester United project to be trusted also in the coming years, thanks to the two-year deal for consultancy role for Manchester United. And so will be part of the board of Manchester United after being interim manager. Yes, you mentioned what this means for United and for Rani uh, moving forward beyond this season. What are the exact terms of the deal and when will he be able to take charge? Because it's my understanding he won't be able to to be in charge of United this weekend against Chelsea. So I guess that means Carrick stays on for at least one more game. Yes, Carrick will be on the match for the game for with, with Chelsea. This is 100% sure and also have been communicated to the team today from what I'm told. So it's going to take some days because of the work permit and also because... As we are speaking right now, Ralph Ragnick negotiations between Lokomotiv Moscow and Manchester United are still ongoing. Ragnick himself wants to be respectful with Lokomotiv Moscow as he's under contract. And the same from Manchester United. They want to have a great league with the club. So this is why they're still negotiating and finding the right way to complete this agreement. And then Ralph Ragnick will fly to England and then he will sign his contract as new Manchester United interim manager, as I said, for six months. So till the end of the season, this is the expectation. Then we will see if they want to continue maybe with him, never say never in football. Uh, We know how strange is the sport and sometimes you sign as an interim and then you end up as the manager for many years. So let's see what's going to happen. But the plan is to have a new manager, the new face of Manchester United project in in summer 2022 with Ralf Ragnick having power in Manchester United football decisions in the coming years. And this is why he accepted, because when on Monday, I'm told they had the first contact, Ralph Ragnick, his agents, his lawyers, and Man United, they were offering only the interim role, and Ragnick was saying no, he wasn't excited on the interim position because he wants to work long term. And then Man United proposed him to add two years with consultancy role, and Ragnick said yes to this opportunity. So this is what changed his mind on this May United chance, and this is why he's going to be involved also in the decision of the new, of the next manager of May United with Mauricio Pochettino, still considered the best one by the board because they love him and they would love to have him. But let's see what happens with PSG in this case. Yeah, so you mentioned the potential appointment uh, of uh, permanent replacement at the end of the season. I, what does this mean for the search now? We've, we've spoken a little bit about Pochettino already, but we also know that there's other names in the frame like Ten Hag as well. Does this now change it to make one of them perhaps more of a favourite? I would say Pochettino. At the moment, Pochettino is the one with a 
biggest favor of the board because they like his approach, how he works daily, uh, his European mentality too. So they want to go with Mauricio Poch- for Mauricio Pochettino in, in, in summer 2022. But as I say, it depends how the season will continue with, with Paris Saint-Germain and we will see. And then the name of the NAG you mentioned is absolutely still into the list. It's one of the managers they appreciate. So they always had a list with a plan A with Mauricio Pochettino in first position and then Ten Hag and Rogers as managers appreciated. And then they had another list with potential interim managers with Ralf Fragnik winning this race, but they also had a meeting with Ernesto Valverde. They had a meeting also with Rudy Garcia. So they had many managers in their list, but this is the plan. Plan A, Mauricio Pochettino, and then Rogers and Ten Hag in particular as potential other options for my United in the summer. Yeah, and uh, who do you think uh, is going to perhaps gel best uh, with Ranić's style? Because it's not only a question of which players uh, are going to fit into his system uh, who are currently at United. It's going to be future transfer targets and, of course, the, the next coach who comes in as well. Yes, I think this is a fair point, uh, first of all, because now we have a lot of interviews, old interviews of Ralph Ragnick around speaking about, maybe not so well about Luke Shaw, but in a very positive way about Jadon Sancho. I think it's normal when you are not working for a club to have your opinion on players, and then maybe you jump into a new job and you can change your mind based on daily training. So I think it's going to be honest with players. I still remember when he was one step away from joining AC Milan, it was almost done deal for Ralf Ragnick to be the new AC Milan manager, that he wanted Ibrahimovic out, he wanted Simon Kier out, he wanted to rebuild the project with young players instead of old, let's say old, we are talking about top players, but not so young players. And so let's see with Man United what will be his approach, because of course in the case of Cristiano Ronaldo, we can't say that he is old or young, he is Cristiano and so I'm sure Ragnik is not stupid and he's going to protect Cristiano from any critics and he will be at the centre of the project. At the same time, they need to do the decision on many other players. They have many contra situations to be clarified, like Paul Pogba, uh, also many other players like Luke Shaw who is out of contract in 2023, Lingard, so they have many decisions to take, and this is why Lingard um, and, and many other players will have to face this new era with Ralf Ragnick and then see what is going to, to happen. I'm sure that instead of many other managers, for Ragnick is key to understand that he will have a lot of power in many areas of the club, and one of these areas will be scouting. He loves to find young talents around, and so I think he's not gonna force some situations like if players are not happy to play for United or they want a new contract but from different clubs and not from United he will be prepared to say okay we save money from your salary and we go to look for a new talent talented player in in the same position so this will be the mentality to find players that could be happy to play for United and ready to play for United at top level for many years and not just for one or two seasons this will be the new project of of Ralf Ragnick not just as a manager but as I say as part of the board because we have to consider him more than an interim manager yeah I'm glad that you brought that up because this brings me on to my final question now uh, obviously you've mentioned Lokomotiv Moscow already where he was uh, already in a position but Ranić's taken a very interesting approach uh, over the last couple of months where he's almost gone kind of freelance with his services uh, you know to find new clubs going to such a big club as Manchester United uh, you know first of all to be manager and then later on to be part of that board in like a directorial role Surely that means the end of his potential involvement with any other clubs. I'm sure, yes. I'm sure. This is a very good point, I think, from you, because, you know, uh, as you said, he was working with Lokomotiv Moscow, but also many other clubs were interested in having Graal Fragnik uh, as potential consultant in, in difficult moments or when they want to rebuild the project. So he's always been so requested by top clubs. But at the same time, Man United means that you are working 24 hours for Man United. And I'm sure that for his kind of mentality, it will be like this. He lives on football, so it will be 24 hours focusing on Man United project as a manager in the first six months, but already having the vision as a director to, to help the club for something that has to be long term and not just for six months. It's also important to remind that in he, one of his last interviews, he said that Chelsea were interested in him to have an interim manager after Thomas Tuchel and then he said no because he didn't want to be the manager for three or four months it's not in his style and this means that now the new Man United would be built also with him as a director as part of the directors so part of the board so this is why I think it will be 100% focused on on the Manchester United job and he always wanted a Premier League job he was dreaming of Premier League football so for him it was impossible in this case to say no having a chance to be the manager and then to pick the next manager 
Yeah, well, very exciting times. Looking forward to seeing how it unfolds. Fabrizio, thanks a lot for joining me. A pleasure as always. Thank you. Thank you, DJ. Always super pleasure and see you soon on Que Golasso. Likewise. Well, thanks for tuning in, everybody. Remember to follow the Que Golasso podcast on Twitter at Que Golasso pod. Subscribe to the Que Golasso page on YouTube and hit the notification bell. And of course, subscribe to Que Golasso wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks for listening. <laughs>